So as you are to consider your DC machines, it's another part which is important uh, because we will need this in the later modules where we have to consider the DC generators, the DC motors. So it is just a basic part that they just need you to understand what is it that you are going to be talking about or having later on. So basically, we've got uh, two types that we are going to consider of the DC machines. Uh, those are the ones that you're going to be working with in your syllabus. So we have got the two types of DC machines that you must uh, be able to figure out as we are to consider the DC, that is the direct current machines, which are the generators. And we talk of the motors, that is the generator and the motor. So these are the two. So it can be a DC generator. It can be a DC motor. That is the condition. So you're going to notice that the difference between the two is on the conversion of power that is being used. One is converting one form of power to another. So what is it that is happening with the motor? You're going to notice that the motor which is your DC motor is going to be working or playing a role of converting electrical energy into mechanical. So this one, it converts uh, electrical energy. That is the electrical, uh, electrical and which is the electrical power. So we are going to have converting electrical power, which is electrical energy into what? into mechanical energy, which is mechanical power. So that is the conversion that is happening on a motor. Considering a generator, we are going to have it converting vice versa now. So this one, it is going to be playing a, a, a part of converting. So it's, it converts mechanical energy this time, which is mechanical power. So it is converting uh, mechanical power, so that is the opposite now, mechanical into electrical, into electrical. So this one is going to convert into electrical, electrical power. So like I said, we are going to have this part as a, as a, as a, as a, a, a on its own, like later on, we are going to have on its own, where we have to consider the DC motor, we have to consider the DC generator as we talked about the DC generator that it is converting uh, the, the mechanical energy, which is the mechanical input. So let's say this is your generator in that case. It means the power which is at the input is considered as the mechanical. Uh, this power that will be at the input is going to be cons considered as the mechanical. That is your mechanical power. It is con being converted to what? The output, which is electrical, which is our electrical energy. I Meaning, you say the power at the output there is now electrical. It is electrical power that you have to consider there. So that is the same case uh, uh, now opposed with the motor now. Meaning to say on the motor, what are you going to be having? On a motor, we're going to be having. So in this input, it will be as uh, uh, this mechanical, as long as you consider mechanical, it's as a result of a rotation, uh, which is happening. So it's as a result of a, a rotation. On a motor, like we said, it is converting electrical, meaning to say whatever that is entering in the input there is electrical. And at the output there, which is your energy, is going to be what? Mechanical. So there, we are going to be talking of the mechanical energy which is affecting at what? At the output. So like I said, these are just properties that they just need you to know which you're going to work with uh, later on as in the next modules that we're going to have. Also, they want you to know the basic construction of your DC machine, the construction of the main and the main components of a DC machine, uh, which are shown in this figure. These, these are the major components, talk of the bearings, the shaft, fan, end bucket, armature, considering the yoke, considering the field system, 
the commutator and the branch assembly, they need you to know they can draw this one. And they ask you to list these components, be able to understand uh, this part of a basic construction of your DC machine and also the simplified version of a DC machine, which we are seeing in this case where we are now have this presentation. So you must be able to draw your diagram and to list all these as they are presented. You must be able to do that. And understanding that the yoke or the frame is the outer, that is the outer part, which is, uh, the, this is the frame. So it's the outer cast iron or the casting still, uh, which is the, the casing of the machine. Its purpose is to provide mechanical protection or to the motor. So they want you to list each and every part. Talking of the terminal box, the terminal box is fixed to the outer part of the yoke and contains the electrical connections. They want you to list each and every part. So I want you to go through your internet also, search how uh, all these, the purpose of each, the diagrams, uh, they can ask anything there. So you never know what is it that you'll be asked there. And also you must know this part of the amateur assembly. They can give you uh, the condition of the amateur assembly to list. Also, they can draw this diagram and ask you to understand the shaft, the cooling fan, the amateur core, the commutator, and the bearing. They can ask you to list these. They can draw this diagram and ask you to list. Maybe this is A. Uh, maybe this is just given as A. This is given as B. This is C. This is D. They want you to to be able to list these components as they are given on our amateur assembly. So be very careful in your presentation. So like I said, I want you to go through your notes so that you do understand also the cross-sectional uh, and the side views of the amateur assembly as the amateur assembly is also known as the rotor. It is the rotating part of the machine. This is the rotating part of the machine and is located inside magnetic field provided by the magnetic fold, uh, the magnetic poles. The armature is made up of the armature core, the armature windings, the commutator, the shaft. That is what makes up the, the armature winding. So you're supposed to understand all these uh, because they can ask you uh, to list, like I say, these components uh, which is important in your presentation and also to understand more about the amateur windings because these amateur windings that we're talking about, they can be referred to, is it the lap windings that you're referring to or is it the wave windings that you're referring to, which is a major part that you will be referring when you are now dealing with the DC generator on its own or maybe you're talking of uh, the DC motor on its own. So this is a part, I will need you to go through your notes. So the amateur windings, there are two types, which is the lap and the wave winding. So this is the typical diagram that you're gonna need for a lap and for a wave, you're going to need uh, this typical di uh, diagram, whereby when talking of the lap, uh, the, the lap winding, let's start with the lap, considering these are windings, which are also known as overlap or parallel windings also known as parallel windings. So in calculations, they will be using uh, the letter C for the presentation of the lab where you're going to use 2P times the number of pair poles when it is just a way of C is going to be two. Those are the ones that you're now considering in terms of the calculation. But for this part of your just, of just DC machines, they can ask you to draw these diagrams. So please be able to go through uh, these notes in order for you to be able to draw your diagram and also uh, understand the concept of the brushes, the, the role that they play, the types of brushes in your syllabus. They will also need you to go through that. The types of uh, brushes, they're also important considering the carbon brushes. You have uh, carbon uh, brushes. They can ask you these ones. They can ask you the graphite to list these ones the graphite uh, brushes, all right? We also have the electro graphite. So it can be an electro uh, graphite. Uh, brushes that you're considering there, they can be copper graphite. So many different types of uh, 
brushes that you can actually have. So they can ask you to list these carbon brushes in DC machines are made mainly of carbon. Then we talk of the graphite. These are relatively weak and are therefore only used in small machines, the graphite. Okay, they are, are, that is they are used in small machine. Talk of the electrographite brushes. These can carry large currents and have a low coefficient of friction. They are able to carry large currents. The copper graphite, so you're talking of copper, is mixed with the graphite in order to improve the current carrying capacity now of each brush. But the disadvantage of this brush is that although copper enhances the current density of the brush, it, is all, it also compromises the hardness of the brush. Remember the issue of the copper now. So it compromises in the hardening of the brush. So I do not want to cause confusion when it comes to DC machines. I want you to work with the textbook. Uh, read there the basic that they gave you. Understand each and every part, like I said before. Then we are going to meet, uh, considering now these DC machines separate, uh, separately, considering to say we've got a DC generator and we also have uh, a DC motor. Like I said, we are going to be talking of a motor and a generator separately, the calculations that are needed. So you must be able to understand each of them and going to their efficiencies, considering the DC machines. We have to consider also their efficiencies. So there they just want you to know the basics in this case. Then they will extend these DC machines in each and every topic. They are going to be having extension. So this is what we had guys till we meet again.